almost 7.35 on a Saturday morning. How you doing? It's September 21. And uh, yeah, we have your forecast for you through this weekend. And we'll look ahead as well because we might have a hurricane or a tropical system hitting Florida. We'll get to that here in just a second. So things a little bit interesting out there is always the case with the weather. Now here at the weather, Mike, I just load up the maps and then I let her rip without any editing. So we'll see what happens. Here we go. The hazards for today all the way up there in northeastern Washington freeze warnings. So be warned, it's going to freeze most likely, probably. I mean, it's a forecast. You never know for sure. Okay, wind advisory for a small patch of South Dakota. Winter weather advisories for the Colorado Rockies. We're looking for flooding concerns, northeastern New Mexico, into the Texas Panhandle. Lots of fog this morning, Indiana, up into Michigan, a little bit of Illinois and Ohio, and it's coastal flooding concerns for the Delmarva up into New Jersey. Time for our weather spotlight, spotlight, spotlight. We do look out to the traffic, uh, tropics. See, no editing. Here we go. <laughs> Good luck, Mike. Um, we, we're expecting some development here in the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico for the next seven days. This is a 40 to 60 percent chance of further development here. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, out in the middle of the Atlantic, not much going on. This is less than 40 percent chance of development for uh, all three of those potential systems. But as we continue with our weather spotlight, spotlight, spotlight part two, this is the GFS, a snapshot for Friday the 27th. So six days from now, if this comes true, could be perhaps a hurricane heading towards Florida. Now, of course, this is a long ways out, especially when you talk about tropical systems and where they could go. Um, so anywhere from Louisiana to the Florida Gulf Coast, you know, just be aware of what may be coming. And obviously, as we get closer, we'll know more and we'll keep you posted, of course, right here on the weather mic, because that's what we do. All right. Uh, for today, here's your surface map approaching cold front for the Midwest with some scattered showers and storms ahead of that. That cold front also heading south into the central plains with a chance of showers and thunderstorms with that. There's your Colorado Rockies uh, mixed precipitation that will be snow at the higher elevations. And also ahead of that front with an upper level low that's moving uh, into New Mexico. This is where our chance for severe weather and heavy rain flash flooding is possible. So we're talking mainly the, uh, the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas, northeastern New Mexico, a little bit of Kansas too with that flooding rain potential. But eastern New Mexico into West Texas and parts of the Panhandle, this is our severe weather threat for today, our biggest severe weather threat for today. And the marginal risk around that. Um, but then also a marginal risk up here in Iowa, where I live, and you know parts of Nebraska, uh, Omaha included in that, maybe Lincoln, uh, down into Kansas, parts of Missouri, and also up into Minnesota and Wisconsin, and then another area of a marginal risk from New York State through Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, and Maryland. So these are the places to watch out for at least isolated storms that could be severe, but your tornado risk is down in uh, New Mexico into West Texas. So the 5% risk you're talking along I-40, Tucumcari would be included in this in New Mexico, further south to Fort Sumner, say, uh, Portales, Clovis included, um, well, on the border of the 5% there. And then the 2% would include Lee County, so Tatum, Lovington, down to Jow, uh, over to Carlsbad, and, uh, and then up and through Roswell on the Texas side, just to the west of Lubbock for level land and uh, down towards Andrews, and then north of Lubbock for Plainview, Hale Center, uh, up to Amarillo. So this is your chance for tornadoes today. And if there are storm chasers out, this is where they're going to be. Well, let's do the anomaly map. So this is your departure from average temperatures uh, this afternoon. And you can really see where that cold front is through the northern plains, moving into Minnesota, moving into Nebraska, moving almost all the way through South Dakota, and then southward too um, into, say, Kansas, Oklahoma, Panhandle, Texas Panhandle. This is our 
coldest departure from normal and a lot of that's going to be rain cooled as well but as the front moves through too and then uh, Arizona getting a nice break from the heat but still over 90 for Tucson as their streak continues and then the much above average temperatures in the Midwest and Great Lakes and also ahead of the front for say Oklahoma into parts of Texas and even Arkansas our surface for tomorrow looks like this Further progress eastward and southward with our front. Our heavy rainfall shifts further to the east and south as a result. So heavy rain, flash flooding possible in Missouri, Illinois. Also further east in Texas, uh, say Wichita Falls down to San Angelo. And then, you know, on the other side of the front, it's um, scattered showers, storms, a strip of more steady, cool rain from Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska and more snow for the Colorado Rockies. And then for tomorrow on the severe weather front, just a marginal risk, but there is a risk, <laughs> all the way from the big bend of Texas, through West Texas, through Oklahoma City, Tulsa, parts of Kansas into Missouri. So isolated severe storms here. Our anomalies for tomorrow, so taking a look at the departure from average, and there's a big bullseye of 20 25 degrees below average temperatures, Kansas into eastern Colorado, a little bit of Nebraska and getting into the Texas panhandle, Oklahoma included here too. And then the much above temperatures in the Midwest moving into the east, the eastern Great Lakes. So that's where the warmest departure from average would be. I mean, here's how that translates into actual temperatures. Take a look at Arizona. So like four degrees below average for Phoenix, and then the high is expected to be 102. <laughs> That's going to be hot. Uh, still 90s for Tucson too, but you see that cold front making progress through Texas with a lot of 70s here, and then you get to East Texas and we jump to 92 for Houston. Uh, low 90s for Louisiana and to Mississippi, even up into Nashville. Um, and you know much of the southeast in the low 90s and then you see more of those still 80s for the midwest because the front's not quite here yet but still nice cool 70s up in in the northeast but behind the front we're seeing a lot more 70s even some 60s in the northern plains and parts of the upper midwest and heating up again for california mid 90s here's your 48 hour rainfall so this is what we're expecting for the next two days the biggest amounts here, you know, is our Texas panhandle with, you know, you could see northward of three, three and a half inches of rain in spots. Other parts of West Texas up to a couple inches. Parts of, uh, you know, Kansas getting in on some of the heavier rain. Same with northeastern New Mexico. Then you get into Missouri and we see another patch, two and a half, three inches for some areas. And then parts of southern Iowa into Illinois. Um, especially, you know, up to two inches for isolated areas. Your surface on Monday as we keep moving ahead in time. Cold front through most of Texas now. Scattered showers behind that. Uh, our, our front becomes more stationary into the Midwest, but still scattered showers and storms through the Midwest, eastern Great Lakes into the Northeast. We still keep a patch of snow in Colorado. And it's another cold front up there through Montana, Wyoming, with a couple patches of snow possible in Wyoming. And your departure from average on Monday's temperatures starting to mellow out a little bit, <laughs> um, sort of averaging out a little bit, not as dramatic on the highs or the lows. But we see, you know, still 10 degrees below average uh, almost for parts of Missouri through Arkansas back into West Texas. But then we see the heat returning or the above average temperatures returning for the northern plains into the upper Midwest with 10, 15 degrees above average. California heating up too and the southeast getting a little bit warmer. But there's another area of pretty cool temperatures there, Pennsylvania to New York State about 10 degrees below average. All right, let's get into the GFS this morning. And right now it's kind of quiet, not too bad here. Uh, but as we go through time, which is what we do, <laughs> we do see our showers and storms busting out here as our upper level low moves in to this environment interacting with that cold front. 
showers, thunderstorms, heavy rain from, um, you know, parts of Colorado, Kansas, panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma into northeastern New Mexico. And that's where we're expecting our big action. Now, remember, some of these storms could be tornadic as well. Our slight chance of tornadoes even goes down here, uh, Andrews and Gaines County in West Texas. So being, you know, keep an eye out for that this afternoon and evening. And then we see another big area of storms and showers, heavy rain into Missouri, and then also up through parts of Iowa into Wisconsin, and not to be left out, parts of the East Coast. Here's your snow for Colorado. We're looking at tonight. So this is Saturday night um, around sunset. And then we get towards midnight tonight. This is just before midnight. This is, and this is midnight. So we still see lots of showers here moving in from the central plains into parts of the Midwest, Missouri especially, and lingering back into Colorado. As we get into the day Sunday, some heavy rainfall in northern Missouri getting into southern Iowa, parts of Kansas, and maybe a little bit of Nebraska, moving into Illinois, and then into Indiana and Michigan. More showers here. This is more of a cooler rain uh, for Sunday. This is uh, around noontime. For West Texas and then as we go through the day tomorrow afternoon we start to see bigger storms as the front pushes further south and east in Texas and Oklahoma some scattered showers and storms here through the Midwest up into the Great Lakes as well we're getting to Sunday night here midnight Sunday into Monday morning and we see those showers and storms moving into Kentucky now Parts of Tennessee into the Virginias, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, um, as again, our cooler air shifts further to the south and east. However, the heat's going to return, even though it's cooling off in spots now, as we get to our six, you know, a week from now, um, it's going to be pretty warm across the country compared to average. So pretty good chances of above average temperature nationwide from, say, the 26th into the 30th to end the month of September. Precipitation-wise, you know, as we watch for a possible tropical system moving towards the Gulf Coast, that's where we see our best chance of above-average precipitation, and that goes all the way up the East Coast and then lingers back into the Central Plains, parts of the Midwest. The dry stuff up into the northern, you know, upper Midwest, Northern Plains, back into the Intermountain West, and uh, that's it. That's your look at your forecast through not just this weekend, but a peek into next weekend as well. We'll keep an eye on uh, what could be a hurricane for Florida and maybe even all the way back to Louisiana. Again, we have to keep an eye on how mu if it develops and then where is it going to go from there. All right. Um, have yourself a great rest of your weekend. And thank you so much for tuning in. I do appreciate it. And depending on the schedule for tomorrow... Um, I may try to update us on a Sunday. I know I get pretty busy with church stuff, so I don't always have time to post on Sundays. But certainly Monday at the latest. But we'll, we will either way. We'll see you soon right here on The Weather Mike.